All right, man, we back. Marcy Sports Talk. Let's talk about why not Fred Van Fleet in free agency this year. Um, if you didn't know, the NBA is going to push back the lottery and the draft. I heard it's like September, August. So the next season may not start until Christmas, December 2020. And they're going to try to jump start this season because selfish billionaires don't want to take a loss. But, hey, it is what it is. Let's get into it about Fred Van Fleet and why not Van Fleet. Um, we're going to talk about cheaper options out there as well, too. And I'm going to kind of ease into the free agent spotlight until I see uh, the draft spotlight, until I see what the NBA is going to do as far as the 20, uh, continuing, resuming the 2019-2020 season. But, uh, you know, Toronto probably going to let Van Fleet walk because Norman Powell was playing well. And, you know, Van Fleet had a few injuries this year as well, too. But, you know, it's kind of remind me of a he would have a Ben Gordon type of feel to it. He was pretty good in Toronto, but the money that he going to try to get on the on the open market is just too much. He might get 20, 20 some million dollars. And, you know, if you was going to pay him 20 some million dollars to come here, you might as well pay Andre Drummond. Van Fleet is a good combo guard, but, you know, he's not going to make life better for Christian Woods or Diambo or nothing like that. I would rather just keep Derrick Rose on the team for what he making rather than bring, bringing in Fred Van Fleet. You know, he ain't an elite defender neither. So once again, you bringing in, you know, a, a guy who ain't really a natural point guard, but he ain't a, an elite defender neither. So what you gonna play him at the two, a combo guard? If he can't defend, you know, and that's the key to winning the championships, you know, for damn near every team in the NBA. You know, being able to defend your position, he can't defend the Westbrooks of the world, or you know, he kind of he kind of like the same thing as far as, as far as Kyle Lowry. You know what I'm saying? Not a great athlete, but he really really crafty. He can shoot the rock a bit. It's only one season. He shot over 40% from three-point land, but he can get to the rock. He a crafty guy, but, you know, he lacks athleticism. You know, and I think he's a great piece for a team that's looking to win a championship, to be honest. You know, that's on the, the fringe of winning a championship. He would be a great piece off the bench for, like, uh, the Lakers, the answer Lewis Williams for the Clippers. He would be a great piece for, you know, just teams that's on the cusp or closer on the up and up. As a young team for the, for the, for the Pistons, if you're going to get a, a combo guard, then, you know, you know, other options out there it could be Anthony Edwards in the draft. It could be Boyan Boyanovic from the uh, uh, Sacramento Kings. He could be a, che a cheaper answer. And, you know, he a little bit more twitchy. You know, he got a little bit more playback and ability as well. I think Van Fleet might be a little bit more willing defender, but he got more size and he can shoot the ball and he can get to the rim. He could be a Vinny Johnson off the, off the bench, but Fred, Fred Van Fleet isn't an elite you know, basketball player. And I think elite basketball players, they get that players that make $20 million, you know, they should be at least potentially be uh, potentially to be elite. I don't really see the potential to be an elite player. I don't think Fred Van Fleet going to be an all-star. And if he's not going to be an all-star, then I'm not paying him nowhere near what Dre was making, what Blake is making nowhere near $20 million. He a $10 million player at best. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have the combo guys like Luke Kennard. You didn't have, you know, the Reggie Jacksons. You need a true point guard and you need a true two guard. You know what I'm saying? If they're going to be a little shorter, they better be Joe Dumars. You know, and Fred Van Fleet ain't the the the, the animal Dumars is on the defensive end. So if you're going to play him that type of money, I don't think you want him to come off the bench and be your Vinny. If you pay him that type of money, you want him to be able to be at least suck fucking Joe Dumars. You know, and I think the Pistons need to stay away from him because he got Ben Gordon rolled all over it again. And the question is, do, do, does he want to come here? <laughs> you know, probably not. Toronto, not that far. I didn't draw the, from Detroit to Toronto. It's not too far. And obviously he wouldn't have to, you know, he would be in the United States again. And, you know, if Toronto wants to bring him back, that's the question. They don't seem like an organization that wants to spend a lot of money. They have to make a decision on Gasol, Serge Ibaka, and Fred Van Fleet. And they just gave Carl Lowry an extension, a one or two year extension, whatever it was. So, like I said, they got Norman Powell, and he's really stepped in and came up into his own this season when Van, Fred Van Fleet has been out. But Van Fleet was having a phenomenal year, but players tend to have a phenomenal year when that bag on the line. You know, he could shoot it, he could score it, but he he more of a of a of a glue guy. You know what I'm saying? He more of a guy that can come off the bench and give you a spurt. You know, and the Pistons, they not at that point where, you know, they not at the point where you 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 just got the cap together. Do you really want to pay a bench guy that give you a spark 
You know what I'm saying? Because Fred Van, Fred Van Fleet not going to come here and be the floor general you need him to be. He's not going to come in here and turn into Isaiah Thomas or Chauncey Billups. You know, he don't have he don't have the athleticism and he don't have the size and he don't have he don't have the defensive potential to do that. You know, so if you go out there and get you a point guard like Lamelo Ball and playing with Fred Van Fleet, maybe it can work. But Fred Van Fleet is a liability on defense. Too small. Even for the tools, the Russell Westbrooks today, the John Morants, I mean, even the Eric Bledsoe's and, and, and guys of that nature, you know, John Wall will be coming back. He too small. One thing about the Pistons is how they kind of trending now with Diambo and Christian Wood, they long. Keep it, keep it, keep it going. If you're going to be long, keep it going. You know, get you a LaMelo, get you a Killian. You know what I'm saying? Be like Milwaukee. Be long, defend. You know what I'm saying? But the difference is how you play making point guard. I'll be highly upset if they got Fred Van Fleet. Fred Van Fleet need to be somewhere with the Lakers, the Brooklyn Nets, you know, Stan Toronto, you know, team, teams like that. You know, but he he can be the Lewis Williams for the Lakers. But for the Pistons, no, nah, you got Derrick Rose. You should draft you a point guard. No more tweeners. No more Ben Gordons. No more uh, combo guards like Reggie Jackson. No, get you a true point. Get you a true two guard. You know, and you build from there. You know, but you got Boyan Boyanovich. That, that can be similar. I don't know how much money he going to get on the market. He restricted, but... Sacramento just paid Buddy Hill all that money. I don't imagine they're going to pay him all that money unless they trade Buddy Hill. But Boyanovich is a good player when he's healthy. You know, ball handles on point. I think he's bigger than, than uh, Fred Van Fleet. He could be your microwave off the bench. He should get less money than uh, uh, than uh, Fred Van Fleet. You know, if you want to bring Fred Van Fleet to play the one, you know, I, I just don't like that. You know, I really don't like anybody in free agency not named Anthony Davis or Brandon Ingram as far as the top dollar guys. We all know Anthony Davis going back to the Lakers. You know, DeMar DeRozan's out there. You know, don't he want to be in a winning situation? You know, might be a sign and trade, you know, for TJ McCollum. Uh, they sign, you know, DeMar to resign DeMar in, in uh, Sacramento. I mean, excuse me, in Port I mean, San Antonio and trade him for McCollum to play with DeMar DeRozan. That might work. But as far as as far as Fred Van Fleet, I just got a Ben Gordon feel to it. Got a Reggie Jackson feel to it. He bought out this year. If Toronto don't want him back, then why should we want him? That's the question. If the top level teams don't want him, why should we want him? Like I said before, Van Fleet is a good player, but to get that amount of money and never be an All Star and probably never going to be an All Star. He's not going to change life with Detroit. Detroit need to manage the cap, sign a bunch of one-year players. If you don't get Ingram, you know, sign a bunch of middle, middle, mid-level guys, you know. That's how you do it and just keep drafting and drafting and drafting. And then down the line, if, if these some of these draft picks pan out to be stars, you have money under the cap to sign them. You can bring vets here and there. You can do it like uh, Philly did. So I ended up getting Jimmy Butler, Tobias, and all them there. So, you know, Red Fan Fleet wouldn't be in my – he couldn't be my Vinny. He couldn't, you know, be the role that they wanted Ben Gordon to be. I would look at Boyan Boyanovic. He should be a cheaper option, but maybe, maybe not. But let me know what you guys feel about, you know, bringing Fred Van Fleet on and what I'm missing. I just don't like the part that the, the part that he's short and he's stubby. He going to try to get all-star money, but he ain't never been an all-star. He a glue guy. Now, if I can get him from 10 to $12 million, maybe $15 million, maybe I'll consider it, but I just don't want to get short, and, and, and I'm tired of those combo guards and them positionless players in the backcourt. We need a, a real one, and we need a real two. We need a Rip. We need a Joe. We need guys like that. But, hey, let me know what you guys think about possibly bringing Fred Van Fleet on. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description. If you have a business question, quality sponsorship, or video request, keep sharing the videos. Um, yeah, if you want to chop it up, you want to do some collabs, I'll, you know, start collabing. I got the podcast. If anybody want to hop on there, uh, we can, you know, chop it up about some topics there. It's easy for me to get you on there. But like I said, if you want to make a donation, cash out PayPal there. Don't forget to check them out the channel while wow, Goodfellas Sports TV for more sports, music, news, and entertainment. Um, also the backup channel, more C Sports Talk 2.0, if it ever go down or whatever happens again. And 
Uh, we should plan a few streams this week, probably lion streams, maybe a pistol stream here and there. So let me know what you guys think. One time for the one time. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. That link in the description as well. We gone.